I mean, the question I have, Gary, is is the message really that we need to retool our education skills and, and get on board and, and learn about networks, about graphs, and try to figure something out? Is that, I know? think the message is you need to get curious again. You need to learn more about things. What those things <clears> are, <throat> I've presented a few, but it, for your world, it might be something completely different. But if you're curious enough and you watch for those weak signals, um, uh, I think I think the the thing that needs to be done is you need to learn more about how the world is changing. How the world is changing. Absolutely, mm -hmm. um, you know, skills building uh, is the way forward. And you know, there's there's MOOCs, these massive online courses, similar to badges. Lots of hype, lots of uh, overselling in the near term, but don't underestimate it in the long term. I so, think. So you know. if I can just you know, in my thinking about this topic. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems as though I'm really missing out on how to make use of all the social media, the Facebook, the LinkedIn, the Twitter. I mean, one message I think I got is that I cannot be, you know, lazy about this. I got to really think about getting a message out. Like I know people, friends of mine that are, they have a Twitter uh, account and they're, they're just sending stuff out there to, to gather people to link to them and to follow them. So is it about building a network and building a, a message and, and building a brand that's about yourself? It's about ideas that you find intriguing. The, 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 the way to succeed on Twitter is not by tweeting about yourself. Every once in a while, put a tweet of your kids online, right? Put something personal. The, the, the way, the brand is, these are the ideas, the ways of thinking that Dan finds fascinating. I'm not following Dan, I'm following the ideas that he finds fascinating. So I think that that, that is your brand is to surround yourself with interesting ways of thinking. Not to tweet that you got a donut on Fifth Avenue. People that say they hate Twitter, they think it's stupid, believe that that's what Twitter is about. And it's not, it's about sharing ideas. So for yeah. example, my son, uh -huh. who has a Facebook page and has 2,000 friends on Facebook, um, I shouldn't discourage that. I mean, he, that's the, the, in, the, in the years to come, that will be his entree into a, a forum to share ideas and, and to, he, he's really going in the right direction by having, by having this forum. As long as he's not posting pictures of Friday night stuff. <laughs> okay, all right. Absolutely, abs there are risks in sharing too much personal, but that's a, that's a conversation for another, Okay. Yeah. Okay, any more questions, please? Um, yes, right here. Okay, so. Yep, yep. Go right here. Well, I don't care, it doesn't matter. I'm looking for the video. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm just wondering what the, both of you, what is the future of the workplace? You know, is this all going to be remote or is there actually going to be a gathering of people that have to interact with each other? I mean, what you're describing is a bunch of people, you know, sitting around tweeting their thoughts about whatever, <laughs> you know, just their, their wonderful impressions about their ideas in urban settings while we all starve to death because no one cares about the farming or, you know, I mean, how, how fascinating are these people's ideas, and how long do you want to sit there following people's ideas? I mean, don't you want to just, like, sign off and eat at some point? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I can just add to that. Workplace, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it depends on how long you want to look into the future. I mean, part of what I was, I guess, trying to get across in my data is that although you hear a lot about change, change is around the fringe. I mean, I was sitting in the late 90s listening to stories about how the internet was going to destroy the newspaper industry. And slowly but surely it is. But most of the people who bet against the newspaper industry went broke before it happened. So the cha you can read about so much about change, you think it's happening tomorrow. As I said, most people still work for companies. They still get paychecks. Um, companies are almost incredibly old-fashioned in the way they evaluate work. They like to see bodies. I mean, my favorite of all time Dilbert cartoon is one where he uh, decides to save energy by getting a wood-burning stove, and then to save wood costs by bringing printouts home and burning them. And then he gets promoted because he's taking so much work home. <laughs> all his boss knows is he's carrying these big, thick printouts out every day. So he must be working his butt off, you know? We, it, it's going to be a long time before they trust most workers not to basically be under the eye. And in fact, for most jobs, I mean, you saw the growth in management, whatever. For most people's jobs, you're being monitored more than ever. 
constantly. And the growth on the other side of the jobs, the low-paying ones, those are the jobs machines can't do because no one wants a machine to walk out and set the plate in front of them. So the, the, one of the things they, they, they hammer uh, at you in, in, in future studies school is that the tendency is to overestimate the change in the short term, underestimate the long term, right? Overestimate, oversell in the beginning, underestimate long term. People love being around other people. And I think that if you survey the most uh, active people on you know, Twitter in these environments, these are people that, despite thinking that they're online all the time, are the most social individuals in the world. These are individuals that love being around other people that are creative and inspiring. Absolutely companies want individuals next to them. I think people will work more days from home more hours from home or in co-working spaces or whatever, but absolutely work is going to remain a face-to-face -face oriented uh, uh, reality for a very long time. I don't think we'll ever move away from that. Yeah, I don't think it's dehumanizing in any way. I think it's sharing ideas um, that you know, lead to personal growth. Um, you're all here because you received an email, right? <laughs> more questions? Yeah. Uh, Just one more follow-up on that. It's important to remember, and economists and futurists are always wrong, and we have a terrible track yeah. record. Um, one of the first forecasts for the internet was that it would destroy cities, that there would be no need for cities because you could work from anywhere, and why would you choose to work from Manhattan? And yet, in fact, people like the cluster, and people benefit from clustering, and industries cluster. And restaurants explode. <laughs> Uh, right here, this woman right here in the gray sweater. Sure. Actually, I was. That's all right. Um, I have a sort of a practical question. I I opened up my own shingle in a professional world recently, sort of solo practice, and I I thought I had pretty sophisticated social presence, as they say, social media presence. But boy, was I wrong. Uh, I I need to. I'm realizing I need to retool my uh, my presence there, and my question is: There's there's been a virtual cottage industry of people advising you on that. But your message seems to be that you're willing to embrace that yourself in some measure. Where do you strike a balance? I mean, it, it, it's, it's like uh, uh, you know, speaking to a, a coach earlier, and saying, you know, do you work out on your own or do you need a personal trainer? You, you know, if, if, if you feel like you can do it and get it done, you just get it done. You, re you, know, you read the techniques, the best practices, you get it done. If you're someone that you like guidance, you like having someone give you expertise, engage those individuals because I think as, as, as Jim mentioned, we're not exactly sure what social media people do, but we know that they're getting a little bit better at it. Um, so if you're looking to retool your online presence, um, both of those pathways are, are uh, viable. It's mu much more about your own personal uh, uh, kind of tendencies. Uh, next question, uh, this woman right here. Thank you. Hi, for both speakers, uh, as an HR professional, I've been hearing about the war for talent for a few years now, and uh, your graph reminded me, you know, once all those the baby boomers retire, what is exactly is going to happen with the workforce? Will we have enough people to do the work? People? Sure. Um, I mean, no, seriously, I, it's not a numbers question. The, the maybe 60% of the adult population is working. I mean, we could, we could turn around tomorrow and add 30 million people to the workforce if we uh, had, gave them a good reason to want to get out there and paid them enough money to do it. So we don't have a people shortage. We have maybe a skills mismatch. And we have a, especially in slower economies, we have a, well, yeah, I want someone who can do that, but I ain't paying them that. Believe me, offer 50 bucks an hour and see who shows up. Hmm. Uh, yes, this right here. Uh, you know, you said uh, industry might require a basic cooperation and making and economically important decisions. Well, actually, uh, what I, 
my point was if you're choosing based other than on work-related criteria, you are making a less than optimal choice. I mean, in economics, you should choose the person who can do the job the best. If when they walk in the door, you look at them and say, oh, that fat, bald, bearded guy. I don't like fat, bald, bearded guys. You know. Now, you, you know nothing about what I can do. You've just written me off. Thank you. And so maybe my, I'm the best person for the job. My question, though, um, is having to do with all the data and computerization that's going on, do you see any? Do you see an improvement or, or a use for people who may not be the norm for what's walking in the door and what's considered to be acceptable? Because we know that people of color have a much higher uh, unemployment rate than those um, who are not. So, so we're looking at the future now. So, what happens to those people? Does the, 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 the situation does it get worse? It's not getting worse by and large. Relative employment is improving for groups that have traditionally have had problems. I mean, we've uh, had a real shift, in, especially for women, and we've had some shift for minorities. Uh, but tech, to me, tech is sort of a neutral on that. In theory, yes, you can work from home. It doesn't matter what you look like. They're somewhat reluctant to let people work from home. And the reality is tech lets them find out a lot about you without having to actually ever look you in the face. So maybe they'll decide they don't like you based on some externality. You'll never even know they evaluated you. I, I think my comment there would just be what we need to be pushing for is a wholesale revolution in how we think about learning and education. And it is not fixing schools. It has nothing to do with teachers, and I love teachers. It has nothing to do with fixing schools or high stakes testing or anything. It's about creating a culture of the learner. Individuals that are self-aware, self-directed, and know how to access the tools to build the skills step by step to get to where they want to get. Now, technology and education has been a complete disaster in terms of mismanaged expectations. Technology in the early days was gonna change you know, schools and everyone's gonna be homeschool, right? The technologies have not been very good, and they're a very bad fit for school environments because of all the other politics that layer on top. Learner-based technologies that are outside of schools are now popping up in MOOCs. You know, you can you know you can get a you can get a degree from MIT or Harvard or Stanford, and you don't have to go there, right? You can get a science degree from Brian Greene and the World Science, you know, uh, Foundation. So I think the learner culture is what we need to invest in. Okay, I think we have just time for one more question, right? So uh, right here. And then, then there'll be time to speak with the speakers afterwards, I believe. Hi, so I'm curious if there's any kind of initiatives that bring government together with, say, someone like you from Future Think and Academia um, to, to think about ways to actually create opportunities. I mean, because it seems like there's a lot that the government could do. You have a lot of data and information on where things are going. And um, you know, there's a lag in terms of, of, I guess, academia or universities preparing students for the reality of the job market. And you know, I know things have popped up like General Assembly and so forth that are retraining people who have lost their jobs for what the market needs are. So I, I think it's more personal relationships that exist today, less formal structures. Um, I, I think it's worth noting that, that New York City is becoming a magnet for data science, which you might put in the computer. You know, data science, the quants that all got laid off in Wall Street or they just walked away. Then they went to work for companies like Newton, which is an adaptive learning platform that is, you know, it's like Watson. It's a, it's a game changer. Um, the talent that exists in New York City right now in terms of people that are developing tools to change learning, to change government, to change community building, the sharing economy, right? Airbnb, those types of things. They are strong in New York City. Um, I don't think that the uh, infrastructure to bring the right people together has been formalized just yet, but I think it will, it will happen, so. Okay, I'd like to thank our, our two speakers. I think it's been a wonderful presentation. Please uh, join me in, in thanking them.